Hello, my name is Paul Bowman. I am Professor of Cultural Studies at Cardiff University in the UK. And I am Director of the Martial Arts Studies Research Association and co-editor of the academic journal Martial Arts Studies. Um, and I was um, invited to talk about, uh, talk to the theme of cutting edge research in wushu, cutting edge wushu research. Um, and I think that's a really interesting topic and I wanted to come at it from a different angle. I want to not so much focus on a particular piece of research in any martial art, not just wushu. I know wushu is the interest of the um, organizers of the conference at the Beijing Sport University. But I wanted to think about preconditions of and what goes in behind the kind of conditions of possibility for any cutting edge research, the notion of the cutting edge, the edge that cuts has an apparatus behind it and it has a whole history behind it and a, a whole set of institutions and techniques and, and processes. So I wanted to talk about that and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to talk about um, the argument that we've just published in the editorial of the latest issue of Martial Arts Studies, so that's issue 14, which is autumn 2023. And the editorial um, is called The Mirrored Maze of Martial Arts Studies from Research Network to Scholarly Association. Now, and that can be accessed and downloaded and kept and shared free online from Cardiff University Press, it's open access publication. Um, and I wanted to um, run through the argument that we developed there. So the theme is really a question of um, what does it even mean to talk about martial arts studies, I guess. The reason, I, the reason that I pose it like this is, you know, how long has martial arts studies existed? Well, it's institutionally existed as long as the journal, the conference series, and so on and so on. But what does that mean? Like, you know, who cares? Just another study subject. What's the, what's the big deal about it? The big deal about the existence of something that you can say is an entity, martial arts studies, is that it enables the production of stuff that you could call cutting edge research without the existence of an academic disciplinary field of people who are interacting and interconnecting and communicating and debating and disagreeing. You don't know where the edges are. You don't know where anything is. It's just you often get isolated amateur researchers doing their own thing. How many times have we bumped into someone publishing something online? That's the, their new theory, the first ever theory of this, that, the creation of martial arts, my theory of this. And they haven't read anything. They haven't, they, they, they've got no concept. They haven't done a literature review. They haven't, they have no concept of what's already been said and thought and theorized. So the production of a discourse, an academic discourse, um, is a precondition of the publication of um, cutting edge research in any field. So I'm using the word field. We use the word field all the time. We talk about academic fields, but that's a metaphor. And it's an interesting one because if you, what is a field, like a farmer's field, a field in a farm, and you can stand in it and you can maybe see from one corner to the next, it's unified, it's a homogeneous space, it's rectangular probably. There's a hedge or a fence at the side of it. In the next field, there might be different crops. In this field, there's one crop. Now that's an image of visibility. We know where we are. We, we control the space. We, we're a master of the terrain. But is that what it's like to be in an academic context? I think that it's a weak metaphor. I think that it's a problematic metaphor. And I think that academic discourses are more like a kind of hall of mirrors, more like a mirrored maze, more like the situation that Bruce Lee finds himself in at the end of Enter the Dragon, where he chases Han into his dressing room. And it's a labyrinth of mirrors and mazes. And Bruce Lee doesn't know his way around this. So he has to kind of eventually destroy the maze, destroy the image. But the point is, I think that academic discourses are often a little bit like what we hear people say about social media. We talk about the problems of social media being that we're often in our own echo chamber where we, we follow the things that we like, we think the things that we like, we're reconfirmed in our rightness all the time. 
And the academic context is one that takes effort to find your way around, to find the way that Bruce Lee learns his way around hands, mirrored maze. Academic fields, they're more like forests where you can't see the wood for the trees. They're like a, a, a complex network of interconnections. And it takes real effort to kind of establish the coordinates in there. So I think that I wanted, along with quite a few other people wanted, to develop the academic scholarly study of martial arts so that we could establish a terrain, establish a network, establish connections, and martial arts study was always a project. Each different country, each different nation, each different university context has its own history. So what we call martial arts studies in English will have a different name in Chinese, in Japanese, in German, in Russian, all the languages, all the contexts, and it will have very different histories. Martial arts in the English language academic context is something that we've proactively struggled and fought to establish and to develop. First of all, as a network, you have to bring people together to communicate with each other before you can hope to establish what's known, what's not known, what's to be, what is to be studied and what is to be explored. And the first stage was really, uh, the first stage for me was establishing a, a journal issue. I said I published a journal of an issue called, jo of a, a journal called Jomek Journal just called it martial arts studies it came out in 2014 that was great success so i, I had a, held a conference at cardiff university called martial arts studies people came from all over the world it was excellent it was so exciting i decided to do it again the next year i applied for grant money to establish a research network i got the grant money yes we set up a journal me and ben judkins and our designer hugh griffiths we set up a journal we pushed published it in cardiff university press and all of these things were efforts to bring people together to communicate, to establish what is known, to establish how people in different disciplines are, are approaching any research topic in martial arts studies. And it's been a great success. And I think that the levels and the ways in which we communicate about and research within and the methodologies that we apply to the study of martial arts now at the end, towards the end of 2023, are streets ahead, miles ahead of the way they were less than a decade ago. And that's largely because what enables the production of a cutting edge, it's a sword with a cutting edge, uh, is, is this, the, the, the complex apparatus behind us, not just the sword, but the building of the sword, the making of the sword. And I think that's what the Martial Arts Studies Research Network, Network has achieved. And at this point in time, after almost a decade, or around a decade of martial arts studies coming together self-consciously, deliberately as a project, we're now at the point where the network has been a success and it will be in our interests, in the interests of cutting edge research to establish the Martial Arts Studies Association. So my colleagues and I in the martial arts Studies Research Network, or founding a Martial Arts Studies associate, Association. This will be a development of the network. The, le the network's quite loose, quite informal. We're going to formalize it in different ways. We're gonna keep it as open access as possible. We're gonna keep money and financial considerations as far away as possible, as sometimes will be costs involved in things that always are, but we wanna keep it open access, non-profit, purely scholarly. Now, that might not sound like a, a presentation on the topic of cutting edges in, in martial arts research of any kind, but I think it's fundamental, the institutional dimensions. Are we employing lecturers? Are we nurturing PhD students? Are we developing courses teaching the academic study of, the social critique of, the places of? Are we advocating for different aspects to, around martial arts in any national or social or cultural or educational context? And you can't do that unless you are organized. And that is what we hope to advance with the development of the Martial Arts Studies Association, entirely scholarly, purely interested in advancing the cutting edges of research in and around the study of martial arts um, in society and culture. 
Um, and that's what I wanted to alert you to today. And um, so it's a presentation without real context, real meat on the bones, <laughs> but it's fundamentally important. And I'm very excited about this stage um, of the development of martial arts studies in the English language. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much.